That Soviet nuclear accident in the Ukraine created fallout today in Chicago. Not radiation, not that kind of fallout. This was a purely economic reaction. U.S. investors betting tens of millions of dollars on grain and livestock futures. Simply put, investors were assuming today that radioactive fallout is contaminating Soviet wheat, pastures, cattle and hogs. And that in weeks to come, the Soviets will have to buy those commodities here in the United States. Certainly, there are questions not only about Soviet food supplies, but about the impact of drifting radiation on Poland and Scandinavia, and whether food exports from those countries have been or will be affected. What we're dealing with, after all, is not just what the world knows, but what it believes. Not reality, perhaps, but perception of reality. Where, amid official Soviet announcements, Western intelligence reports, and global rumors, where is the truth? We begin with this report from Don Kladstrup. When these 50 passengers arrived in Vienna today, they were met not by friends and relatives, but by officials with Geiger counters. They are the first evacuees, dependents of Western workers in the Soviet Union, on a special flight from Minsk. Everyone was immediately tested for possible radiation. Everyone. Passengers said they'd seen nothing to indicate a major disaster, but were relieved nonetheless. And we were sitting the whole night on the telex, and at four o'clock in the morning we got information that all women and children will be brought home. When asked if any passengers had suffered from contamination, doctors were uncertain. Well, it could be, I, I don't know. Uh, but one, one can't say. Based on this Soviet photo, it's hard to say much of anything. The picture, released today, purports to show the nuclear fire under control. But a U.S. satellite photo suggests otherwise, and that a second reactor in the complex may be burning. As the cloud of radiation grows, so too does anxiety throughout Europe. Radiation levels in at least half a dozen countries are three to 20 times above normal. Not a serious health hazard, according to officials, but cause for serious concern nonetheless. Especially in Poland, where a crash program was launched to provide anti-radiation medication for children. Precautionary doses of iodine solution were being given to all those under 16. In Sweden, aircraft with missile-like pods were used to collect radiation samples at high altitudes. There was testing on the ground, too. Although experts say radiation levels in Sweden are not harmful, and in fact are falling, many people are not convinced. I'm concerned, yes. I'm worried about what's going to happen if the wind turns around back more to, to, to Sweden. I get angry on, on uh, like, Russia that doesn't say anything. They the Swedish government, which is banning imports of fresh vegetables from Eastern Bloc countries, is upset as well. We have asked for detailed information with regard to the nature and the scope of the catastrophe so that we can take the right actions to, to take care of all our own people here. We have so far not received an answer. There are no answers either to questions about Swiss cheese. Scandinavian crackers, Norwegian salmon, Russian caviar, popular exports. Could they be contaminated? Experts in the United States say the testing for radioactivity in food is imprecise. In this country, we have certain guidelines as to how much radioactivity is uh, allowed in food. The Russians may have a different guideline, and the Poles, Polish people may want to import food here. And I imagine there will be a dispute and a disagreement as to what level of uh, contamination is uh, acceptable. The Chicago commodities market, which soared to record highs today, is already betting on a Soviet crop failure. But that's not the message the Soviet government is putting out, not the signal being picked up here. At the British Broadcasting Corporation's monitoring facility near London, officials say the picture Soviet radio and television is putting out is distinctly lacking in hard details concerning the disaster. One had, I think, hoped, once they started to talk about it, that there, that there would be rather more than there has been. 
This evening, Soviet television repeated the claim that only two people have died. They assured viewers all is under control, that farms and factories in the area are working normally, that Western reports about the disaster are untrue. The Soviet population is used to the fact that the Soviet government doesn't tell them very much when there's a disaster, when there's something like this. It's normal for the government to say nothing until the situation is under control. Today in London, following a meeting with Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, Soviet Ambassador Leonid Zamyatin tried to assure others the situation is now stable, but no one was buying it. What about the reports over here, Ambassador, that uh, several thousand people have been killed in the accident? That's not true. That's not true. Is Thatcher annoyed that you didn't tell the West earlier about this accident? Well, we informed the government of the United Kingdom this morning about this accident officially. But Moira Bremner, whose daughter is one of about 70 British students about to be evacuated from the Soviet Union, is skeptical of Soviet assurances the situation is safe. I don't feel that I can be entirely sure that the radiation levels which are being talked about in the areas where my daughter is, both presently in Kiev and in the area she's passing through when she goes to Moscow and in Moscow itself, are necessarily accurate readings and correct. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I don't feel that I'm going to be sure that she has not been exposed to an excessive dose of radiation until she's home and I've had her go through proper checks. Her daughter, along with other students, is due to arrive here tomorrow evening. But the answers many seek about the disaster itself promise to be much longer in coming. This is Don Cladstrup for Nightline in London.